Ironically, today's popular music embraces, even glorifies, criminals, perverts, gangsters, occultists, mass murderers, even Satan, as well as every pagan, New Age, and Eastern religion known to man. It is my most profound honor to welcome the Dalai Lama. But when it comes to the Son of God, the one who came and died for the sins that the culture of rock and roll applauds, well, what happened 2,000 years ago has happened again. There's no room for him at the end. Consider, for example, the central event of Jesus' life and the stark, awful scaffold upon which that event unfolded, the cross. For this cause I was born, the Messiah told his executioners, and this cause to atone, to pay the price for the sins of the whole world. Or as Jesus had explained it to his disciples the night before, greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. As human beings, our universal tendency is to view ourselves as essentially good, and our sins, if we even use the term, as forgivable when weighed against our good works and our good intentions. Like it or not, however, the Bible paints a very different picture. It's the story of a man named Grady who liked to grade himself upon a curve and he found that when compared to others he wasn't such a perv. Instead of grading on a curve, comparing us as we tend to do with other people, especially really bad people, the Bible declares that our self-righteousness is as filthy rags in the eyes of a holy God who judges every thought, word, and deed done and left undone against the standard of heaven, by definition the criterion of absolute perfection. And against this entrance exam, we've all failed. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The cross is God's ultimate and only solution to the problem of how to redeem us from the necessary penalty for our crimes, how to break the power of sin, and to ransom us from the tyranny of the Lord of that sin. And it's here where the pattern of hatred for Christ and the cross begins to make some sense. The cross is not only the greatest symbol of God's love, it also represents our sin and our need to repent and turn our lives over to God. And it represents Satan's defeat, the gladiatorial arena where Jesus disarmed the spiritual forces of evil and made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them through the cross. It's no wonder that Satan despises the cross and will do everything he can to discredit or diminish it. Behold the crucifix. What does it symbolize? Pallid incompetence hanging on a tree. Because I had the altars of the Druids long before the cross came, and the altars of the Druids will be there long after the cross is gone. Whether the Christians like to accept it or not, he did one saying the cross came by, and passed by my window and I seen it go by and I said, oh, Christ was a little God. Ah, because that was where they hung that last. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>